Hi, PerspectorWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Friday, July 13th. A pretty decent weekend coming to the Mid-Atlantic region, although the heat and humidity will gradually build up over the next couple of days. By the time Sunday and Monday roll around, high temperatures should be at or slightly above the 90 degree mark in the D.C., Philadelphia, New York City corridor. There will be more humidity and the chance for showers and thunderstorms will also gradually increase as we get to the latter part of the week and into the early part of next week. In fact, there could be a significant rain event later Tuesday, Tuesday night time frame into the early part of Wednesday, depending on the progression of a strong cool front system that will move in from the upper Midwest towards the East Coast uh, later in the day on Tuesday. Again, there's potential for some heavy rain with that uh, strong cool frontal system late Tuesday, Tuesday night, early Wednesday time frame and actually that's much needed rain. We've been relatively dry around here for the last couple of weeks. Many lawns are seeing some uh, brown grass show up so we could use some decent rainfall and again there's a shot by the middle part of next week. Well before we get to the local weather situation let's take a look at the tropical scene here in the uh, western part of the Atlantic, the Caribbean scene. Basically a quiet scene right now there are clouds right in this region, well off the mid-Atlantic coastline, actually the remains of what was once Beryl. Uh, that is not going to impact the east coast. It will continue moving to the north and east, following the foot uh, footsteps of Chris, which is well off to the north and east right now as well. So again, basically a quiet picture right now in the tropics nothing at all in the Caribbean Sea and nothing on its way to the Caribbean Sea. Well one more map here before uh, we get to the local weather situation. This is regarding the tropical scene in the Atlantic Basin. This comes from the University of Wisconsin and basically shows some dry air associated with Saharan desert air in western Africa that pushes off the west coast of Africa towards the west. It moves from the east to the west this time of the year with the trade winds. Anything seen here in orange or yellow represents some of this drier air associated with the Saharan desert air uh, uh, from uh, the uh, interior part of Africa. This is an, an inhibiting factor to tropical storm development. So this combined with the cooler than normal sea surface temperatures off the west coast of Af Africa, kind of keeping a lid on tropical activity. It's still relatively early, but uh, basically because of this and the relatively uh, cool waters off the co west coast of Africa, not expecting a, a gangbuster type of tropical season. You can uh, go visit our tropical outlook on the uh, weather website uh, as we talked about that a couple of months ago. Again, a lot of colder than normal uh, sea surface temperatures right in this region right here. And you combine that with dry air from the Saharan Desert keeps a lid on tropical activity. So we'll continue to monitor that over the next couple of weeks. Well, let's take a look at last night's GFS model run from 6E. All these maps available on tropicaltidbits.com. We'll move ahead in six-hour increments. First of all, starting off here Friday morning, July 13th, this little area right in here is the uh, remains of Beryl. Again, uh, a system that will not impact the Mid-Atlantic region. It will continue to move to the north and east, again, following in the footsteps of Hurricane Chris, well off to the north and east of the Mid-Atlantic region. We end the week with plenty of sunshine here. High pressure has uh, moved off the northeast coastline. That kind of opens the door for humidity to build over the weekend. Let's uh, push ahead here. Stays rain-free here. All rain indicated on the GFS by greens or yellows or reds, nothing today in the mid-Atlantic region. Uh, then we get into the day on Saturday. High pressure still lingering here uh, over the mid-Atlantic region. Burrows remains continue to move well away from the mid-Atlantic region. And by the time tomorrow night rolls around, there will be some scattered shower and thunderstorm activity, especially north of the Mason-Dixon line. So you cannot completely rule out a shower or a thunderstorm late Saturday or Saturday night in the I-95 corridor region from D.C. to Philadelphia to New York City, especially in areas from Philadelphia north and east. Now let's keep moving forward. By the time Sunday moves around, chance of a shower or a thunderstorm, nothing widespread or significant expected Saturday night or Sunday, but again, can be a shower or a thunderstorm in any of the 
uh, big city locations along the I-95 uh, corridor. And again, humidity and heat will build up so that by the time Sunday afternoon rolls around, we'll be pushing the 90 degree mark and the humidity will be quite noticeable. Then let's keep moving forward here into the early part of next week. As we get into Monday morning, a couple of things to point out. A beautiful high pressure system in southern Canada. You love to see that high pressure to our north and west this time of the year. In fact, that has a refreshing air mass that will be preceded by a strong cool frontal system. Now let's keep moving forward here. By the time we get to Tuesday morning, here we go. A strong cool frontal system located right in this region right here. In fact, let's just put that in here. About right in this region right here come Tuesday morning. And again, a very pleasant air mass here following that cool frontal system anchored by strong high pressure in the northern plains. We'll move forward here and into the latter part of the afternoon on Tuesday. A band of showers and thunderstorms could certainly approach the I-95 corridor. And again, I think there's a chance for some heavy rain with this particular funnel passage. Much needed rain in the I-95 corridor. Well, of course, focus in on that over the next few days. But again, late Tuesday, Tuesday night, a strong cool frontal passage. Showers and thunderstorms likely. Could even be some heavy rain with that. Eventually, we get into this air mass here for the latter part of next week, which will be a pleasant air mass, or seasonable at best, maybe even below normal temperatures by the latter part of next week. Indeed, it looks like we're setting up for a cooler than normal pattern here for the latter part of July, and that probably will continue uh, through the month of August as well here in the Mid-Atlantic region. Again, a cooler than normal pattern setting up for late July and August. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. That week, the first week of July where we were very hot for about a seven or eight day time period, high temperatures at 95 degrees and above in Philly, New York City and uh, D.C. We're going to look back at that, uh, that week, I believe, as the hottest week of the entire summer. Uh, unlikely to see 95 plus degrees for high temperatures on a sustained basis for the remainder of the summer. Again, I think the worst of summer, summer's heat, is actually over in the I-95 car. And we'll, of course, update that when needed over the next few weeks. Well, in terms of temperature, so let's like, take a look at the 6Z GFS uh, forecast maps for the 850 millibar temperature anomalies. This is a couple thousand feet up from the surface level, the ground level, but it gives a good indication of the surface temperature pattern. Here we're starting off seasonable or a little bit cooler than normal as we begin the day here on Friday. Let's move forward again in six hour increments. Basically near normal as we head into the day on Saturday and then a little bit above normal by the time we get to Sunday. And again, high temperatures Sunday afternoon around the 90 degree mark in DC, Philadelphia, New York City and Humidity will certainly be noticeable by Sunday afternoon. Can be a shower or a thunderstorm Saturday night or Sunday. Let's keep moving ahead and look it up here across south central Canada, the northern plains by early next week. This is Monday morning. Here is where that strong high pressure system sits as of Monday morning, and that is the refreshing air mass headed our way for the latter part of next week. Let's keep moving forward here. You can see Tuesday morning. Quite a significant frontal system right in this region, right here between the colder than normal air mass over the upper Midwest and the still warm, warmer than normal air here in the northeast U.S. Tuesday, probably 85 to 88 degrees for a high, mostly cloudy skies as that strong cool front approaches. And again, a good chance of showers and thunderstorms. That front pushes off sometime during the day on Wednesday, and again, it can be a beneficial significant rain event later Tuesday into early Wednesday. And then cooler than normal air spills into the upper part of the Midwest and reaches the Mid-Atlantic region for the second half of next week. This is Thursday morning forecast map. And again, I think we're setting up for an overall cooler than normal pattern for the latter part of July and August. Doesn't mean we won't have any more hot weather, but I think it does mean that we'll look back at the first week of July when we had 95 to 100 degree highs for multiple occasions in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. That will probably turn out to be the worst that, uh, of summer's heat here in the I-95 Carter. That's it for now. For PerspectiveWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.